So I've built a partially working focal gyroscope and I want to demonstrate that and the extent to which it's working. First I'm going to talk though about the theory of what this thing is supposed to do. So here I've got a little globe. Uh, the Earth spins in this direction in space. Uh, I'm located here in San Francisco. So from my point of view, this point on the Earth is always my local up. So what seems to happen from my perspective as I'm sitting here and not moving, so it seems is that the, the universe goes around me like this. It's this point here is always up. So for example, stars rise in the east, go overhead and set in the west. And what I'd like to be able to do with the gyroscope, um, actually before talking that, let me switch to a simpler model here. Okay, so this, this model sort of shows the, the motion more easily. Um, this threaded rod is pointed toward Polaris, toward celestial north. Uh, this direction is geographic north from my point of view. That's west, towards the camera is east. And the perceived motion of the stars is shown with this uh, twist tie that's on, that's on here. So the way I perceive stars moving is like this. They, they rise in the east, they reach the maximum in the south, because I'm in the northern hemisphere, and then continue around and set in the west. So every star in the celestial equator moves around me like this. Rising in the east, goes to the south, then sets in the west. If I point this toward Polaris, and then go around, Right, there's barely any perceived motion. Polaris more or less stays still in the sky. And if I point it at an angle, well, then there's motion, but less so. So this would be if I was pointing towards something in the northern hemisphere. So the maximum perceived motion of stars in the sky happens when it's pointing at the celestial equator. So the relevance to the gyroscope is that a gyroscope contains a spinning flywheel, and a spinning object will tend to retain its orientation in space unless acted on by a torque. So, for example, if I set the, the gyroscope spin axis to point west, which is where the Swiss tie is currently pointing, then as the Earth rotates around it, from my perspective, I should see the spin axis set just like a star in the sky will set, because the spin axis would continue pointing at whatever star I pointed at. Uh, I point it west because that'll be toward the celestial equator and so maximum motion. If I pointed it uh, north, right, then, then as it moved, you would still see motion, but less motion, less just because it's, it's closer to the celestial north pole. So what I'm going to do is point my gyroscope west, and then the, the motion due to Earth rotation will be down to the right. I'm at 38 degrees north. This is set up so that this is pointing up at an angle of 38 degrees, and therefore the maximum altitude of a celestial equator is 52 degrees. So it should set at an angle going down and to the right of 52 degrees. Okay, so that's the theory of this. Now, the mechanism that I built is in two pieces, or three, depending on how you count. Um, this is the, the gyroscope, and at the end I'll talk about how it's constructed, um, but the, the important bit is down here, oops, down here, is the actual flywheel, but it's encased in a paper cowling that I built so that any air currents it generates are not going to cause a torque. 
Um, then on the left, there's a motor. The arrow indicates the spin axis using the right hand rule. Uh, battery pack above it. There's a mirror on the front uh, off of which I bounce uh, that laser pointer. And the laser then is projected onto that graph paper so I can track the motion more easily. The graph paper is about one meter from where the uh, mirror normally rests and the uh, squares are one centimeter. So then um, the gyro assembly is just sitting in its stand. Um, so in order to allow the gyro to pitch, I place it onto this boat, which has two spikes sticking up. And if I, it's going to be tricky while holding the camera. There, roughly got it. So I've placed uh, the pennies that are on either side onto the spikes. And then I'm just going to try to roughly balance it. Um, yeah, that's, that, that'll do for, for the moment. It's, it's not properly balanced. What I would then do if I was going to run the experiment right now, which I'm not, is I would start using these nuts and, and these to fine tune the balance to try to get it as close as possible. Uh, what you want is the center of mass of this whole pivot assembly to be in line with the, plate, the, the pivot points, where the, the points meet the pennies the line going through them, and that's where you want the center of mass. So then this boat uh, is placed into this water. And it's already slipped off there a little bit. Uh, yeah, let me just try to fix this. I don't want it getting too crazy here. Problem is it'll, it'll break. Those pennies are only glued in place. And it's completely unbalanced because I actually put this in the wrong way. So let me flip this around. That's better. And of course the, the flotation then ensures that it can freely pivot in the horizontal plane. Let me get this out of the way. But then there's an issue with it potentially touching the edges. So this is not being caught by the camera. Um, I've got these boxes sort of set up on the on the sides and then I place a ruler over the top like that and then adjust it so that the boat is kept from touching any of the sides it's only touching here which is approximately in the center line so that it doesn't impart any torque when it does touch. And then like I say laser bounces off the mirror goes to the graph paper. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show time-lapse footage of about one hour of me running, uh, running this experiment. So this is the time-lapse footage showing the laser spot as it moves on the graph paper over approximately one hour of running the experiment. Every time you see that and this is sped up 100x. Every time you see the laser pointer jump, that's because I manually adjusted where the mechanism was pointing to keep it on the graph paper and deal with some of the effects I'm about to talk about. I've annotated the image of the graph paper with four of the main forces that are observable in the course of this experiment. First, at the top, I've got the Earth's magnetic field. The motor that drives the gyroscope has a magnet inside of it, and that magnet is oriented so that, or I've actually, I mean, it, it, it's inside its housing, and then I've adjusted where that housing is so that magnetic equilibrium has the spin axis pointed west. 
um, and the equilibrium point is approximately where the green line has its center, about nine squares in from the right. So as the laser pointer drifts from that central location, there will be a gradually increasing torque due to the magnetic field. And my intent with this setup is simply to keep it close enough to magnetic equilibrium that the magnetic effect is not significant. I think I've succeeded in that regard. Next is the pink line so showing how the gyroscope processes when it's not balanced. If the gyroscope is trying to fall away from the camera because of lack of balance, then that is a torque to the left and will therefore cause the spin axis to follow the torque to the left. So that's the angle going down and to the left as the far side of the gyro tilts away from the camera due to being unbalanced. Uh, if it tries to fall toward the camera, then it processes in up and to the right. Uh, up because it's the front side's falling toward the camera, meaning the mirror is rising, and to the right because that's a torque to the right, and so spin axis follows the torque. Um, the brown is the gyro compass effect, which is what happens when the gyro tilt apparatus cannot tilt. So if I just don't allow it to tilt at all, then the effect of the, of the Earth's rotation is to cause the spin axis to try to seek celestial north, which is to the right. Um, and it will, you know, if, the, if it cannot tilt, of course, then, then the laser pointer will move in a flat direction. And finally, there's the signal that I'm trying to measure, which is the Earth's rotation, which should be sending the laser pointer down and to the right at a 52 degree angle. So that's the blue line. And over the course of this experiment, what you can see is that it, most of the time, what it tends to do is start by moving both to the right and down at a somewhat shallow angle. And I think what's happening there is that's a mixture of the precession to the right and earth rotation down. Eventually, earth rotation brings the axis away from the point where it wants to process to the right. So it's no longer falling uh, up, essentially. Like the, the laser, if it weren't spinning, the laser pointer would go up. But earth rotation is bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down until it gets to approximate equilibrium. Once it's in equilibrium, then it's able to track earth's rotation for a while until it crosses now into wanting to fall the other direction and then it precesses back to the left. And because my, um, because the, the pivot is just not well enough balanced, uh, there's, it's difficult for me to keep the earth rotation effect for more than here. It's a maximum of about five minutes. Um, what I found is that it, I can, I can play with the pivot to increase the region of stability, but the more I do that, the more, um, I get the gyro compass effect instead, because if the, um, if the pivot sort of falls into a local minimum, the earth rotation torque is uh, often not strong enough to get it out of that local minimum. So the experiment you're seeing here is, is done with overall negative stability, um, but a few regions of neutral stability, or neutral enough at least, that the, the earth rotation effect is visible for a few minutes at a time. Now, even so, over the course of this hour, there's probably only a total of 10 minutes in which it's tracking the motion that I'm trying to measure properly. Um, and that's somewhat unsatisfying, of course, because you know the ideal would be that you know, like it would just start at the upper left of the paper and go all the way to the lower right, which is just coincidentally, by the way, a 52 degree angle. And I didn't really plan it that way, but it just so happens that from one corner to another is 52 degrees. Um, and I'm working on improved gimbal designs that would actually let it track for that duration. That would be about half an hour, a little bit more than half an hour, if it actually tracked um, the full length of the paper. But I think this is still a reasonably 
convincing demonstration that that at least that earth rotation signal is there and you could argue that this is precise enough to make a measurement of the rate of rotation that's that's probably a bit of a stretch but at least i think it's reasonably clear that there's some kind of signal there I should mention that the reason I set this up so the spin axis points west rather than east is so that the motion I'm trying to measure does not line up with either of the precession directions. If you point the spin axis east, then one of the precession directions will be pretty similar to the earth rotation direction and that makes it possible to fool yourself into thinking you're measuring rotation when all you've done is slightly unbalanced the gyroscope and the motion is due to precession. So it's important with a setup like this to point the spin axis west rather than east. So now I'm gonna show a bit about how this device was constructed. So, let's see, maybe that's a decent angle. The idea is the gyro is sitting in that boat, which is floating. The laser pointer is bouncing off of the mirror, which is here, and onto the graph paper. Uh, the boat is held in the center of the frying pan with this mechanism, so it's touching right there. So let me, okay, so I'm just, maybe I'll take it apart while it's still running. So, so we'll take this apart. And first remove, so just take the ruler off. And then slide these out of the way. And grab the boat. So the boat has this Tupperware container, has its base. Um, this is just a wire coat hanger that I bent into this sort of U-shape. And then there's a twist tie on top. That's what sticks through the hole in the ruler to hold it in place. So I'm gonna turn off this laser pointer. Um, there's a few quarters in the boat just to balance it so that it sits roughly level. And then, so I'm just uh, taking this thing out. Um, that's the flywheel at the bottom, the motor, battery pack mirror on top. Uh, so on the boat, the, this is, there are these two points here and here. Um, those are the tips of a couple of awls that I've removed and then sort of taped and held in place here. Reasonably sharp. The swivel sits on top of them. There's a, a couple of pennies there, one on each side. Let's see the one on the other side. Um, so the points sit on those pennies. The pennies are glued to a couple of nuts, which then the 
threaded rod here and here go into. Um, <clears throat> these uh, nuts here and over here are for balance purposes, so I, I can move them back and forth to try to get the center of mass as close as possible. Um, all right, so that's entirely what this is, is just to hold those balance things. There's a couple screws holding the battery pack in position. And then and you can't see the flywheel because it's protected by this paper cowling. Um, but it's inside that. The paper is there to uh, block the air currents generated by the flywheel from causing a torque because otherwise there's a small amount of air coming off of that which acts like a propeller. So and all and this um, this piece this is just a piece of steel uh, it's meant for reinforcing wooden joints um, and then all these little metal brackets here are just aluminum that I cut out uh, myself and then drilled and filed and so forth. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's the construction.